being a high achiever, there's nothing wrong with that. Enjoy it, really embrace whatever it is that you do and do, do your job to your best ability. But when it's impacting your health and we don't even realize it, so again, if we're not getting the balance, if we're not getting the downtime, learning to bring yourself back into stillness is a really difficult thing to do. But when you start to do it, start to, to really connect to it, the difference it can make in your sense of well-being is, is amazing. from your sanctuary in the mountains in uh, in the Portuguese beauty um, I would love to start today with stress management because I know that your nature coaching is a really beautiful remedy for this there's a really interesting stat on your website which says that 300 billion dollars are lost in revenue annually due to employee stress. So before we start talking about how we can manage the stress, I was very interested to hear what you think about our current relationship with stress that has got us into this situation in the first place. Thank you, Gabriella, and thank you for inviting me. Um, yeah, it's such a, an area to um, really explore and, and be more aware of. Um, thank that stat you shared, yes, uh, there's many of them around how stress is impacting people's mental health. And there seems to certainly be a correlation between um, our advancement in technology and the use of technology and the way the workplace has shifted um, where, where, you know, we're on a lot more, our bodies are functioning in a higher level, we perhaps don't get so much time to rest, restore, you know, really mm -hmm. stop and relax like perhaps we did before. So this sort of 24-7, mm -hmm. always being on, always being accessible, um, and that's not just at work, you know, in life, you know, relationships, um, a lot more choices, a lot more availability, a lot more access, many good things in that. But something that goes with that perhaps is our, we're losing our sense of um, stopping, relaxing, restoring. And alongside this, some people will say, and you can read a lot about this, how this sort of, in one way, we're, we're more connected in the world than we've ever been before, but we've also become disconnected with the natural world and with nature um, and there may be other things you know social things um, psychological things um, but obviously we're here to talk about that connection between um, nature the human health and well-being and stress is a big part of of how we live with stress good stress but when it starts mm -hmm. to take over when we're getting into the realms of burnout yeah so with my work, I've, I've, you know, it's interesting. I just did a workshop last week um, with a group of here in Portugal with a group of people that work together, um, and we did a forest bathing walk in the morning um, up to the site from my house actually up to the site of Castle Ruins. It has a sort of very special feel, magical feel up there. There's a lot of ancient history to that site. Um, the views are stunning. You know, if we're looking mm. for awe and beauty, which we talk about a lot in nature mm. therapy and forest bathing, forest therapy, then it's certainly there. Um, and there's a circle of cork oaks there. So the oak tree is a big part of this culture of this part of the world. Cork, uh, the cork oak. And we spend a lot of time in those trees. But what really became apparent to me, just observing, you know, noticing, being in that environment and then sharing in sharing circle with the group was one, how young they were. They're all in their 20s and had all come to this day, this workshop, because they were feeling the effects of stress. So I try to say very little, but let people just share what they want to share, have time to 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 feel the healing of the nature that's around them or the beauty of the nature that's around them, to open their senses, to awaken the senses. 
and what came up in the afternoon when we came back to the house and did more on the sort of theory around stress and what that looks like for us you know and it's very different for each person it can be mm. some similarities some differences it's a personal thing our relationship with stress um and how it affects us um but i thought what was very interesting with this particular group one was that they were young and two you know one one woman only getting three hours of sleep a night um could not switch off um it was affecting her cognitive abilities um rumination so people talking about the mind the monkey mind thinking thinking can't switch off can't quieten the mind um other things that came up that day from this this particular group this young group was um this sense of yes we like nature yes we know nature's good for us but you know we can't it doesn't mean it's going to make a difference for us and I thought that that was also a very interesting area. So trying to help people take a step back, slow down and allow time in your day or in your week to bring mm -hmm. nature in and really connecting into how that makes you feel. So it becomes this support for you, for yeah. us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Suzanne, thank you for sharing that. There's lots of areas that you've just mentioned that I want to dive into deeper. I'm almost thinking I'm going to go in reverse because the most recent share, you mentioned the burnout, you mentioned the young age at which people are now experiencing stress. And if we, if we place that onto how much technology we've got now and that, as you said, we're, we're on a lot more, I'd love to explore something that actually I've experienced in my own healing journey coming back from burnout, which was literally a terror of slowing down. Mm. And I know that that is a place that we can get to. When we get to that point of stress, the very thing that we need to do, slow down, take time in nature, is just like, I'm either I'm sort of a bit revolted by the idea, I've, I've experienced that, or I'm viscerally afraid of stopping of walking away from my computer so what's going on when we reach that point of terror of stopping well it's you know thank you for sharing that because yeah you know, i've experienced that too and um and i was working in corporate world in in broadcasting in radio in dubai in the united arab emirates you know i loved my job but i had that that the more that actually the last thing you want somebody to say to you is um, just relax when you're in that when you're already at, when you're at that level of stress or mm. you know go and have a walk uh, go and take a walk you'll feel better so I think what's happening there in our body and you know I'm not a doctor I'm not a therapist but what I've learned and the research is there for you all to do your own work on that you know when you're looking at some of the research that's out there now around stress and nature connection is that we you know our nervous systems are so heightened that just as you beautifully described um is that almost the mere definition of high stress or burnout is you're far you've gone so far that to to, to you know if you, we want to really internalize and think about how we're feeling in our bodies we're not really connected properly into the body. We're really on that heightened sense of it's all in the in the head. Our nerve endings might feel that sense of stress. Um, if we've got had, it's like a it's like a you know a, a downward um, spiral. In you know if we're not sleeping well, we're not eating well. Um, one thing is it all has a knock on effect. And this builds up in our bodies, and our our mind is saying, I've got so much to do. You know, I'm at work to be successful and to achieve and to get through the day. Of course, I can't stop for 15 mm. minutes. In fact, it's almost the definite can be not for everybody. The definition of success is the more hours I put in, the more work that I contribute and do, the more I give of myself, then just I, I'm success. That in itself will equal success. And it's really difficult to unpick that and slowly bring that back to you and who you are, your sense of self and what's good for you. What does your body really need? What do you need today in this moment? 
and having mm. and being able to feel you can follow that without judgment, without failure, whatever. Um, so yeah, it's it's a, it's a bit of a journey. It's a journey to get yeah. there to that point. Yeah, thank you to really highlight that journey because I think that the desire to to have that instant relief is is one of those symptoms of stress and the the fear of allowing that prolonged journey to play out is is another symptom of the stress the way that I began to see it was if someone is is running from a wild animal and someone taps them on the shoulder and is like hey mate slow down it's like (laughs) are you kidding (laughs) yeah you're probably you you know know, might be kind of you know your responses you know that thing of anger you know and these things that come up in in the body and sometimes you don't you may be when you're in those real heightened moments you don't even recognize yourself you know that Mm. that that be in you or come out of you but yes it's a very i mean and it is you know again connecting into the wild our ancestors where we come from you know the animal the 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 wildness of being our survival mode you know we know stress a bit of stress is good for us you know it's 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 there you know our um way to survive to be Mm. but when it's gone out of i think out of balance and out of and it's and it's extreme so um i uh I, I left Dubai in 2017 and the year before in 2016 and I don't want to paint a, a, a bleak picture because I really loved my job and I had a great job and it was really you know it was a lot to do with where I was at in my body and I was just entering menopause so there's other things going on I could feel that I was responding to stress differently I, I was yeah I could see that things were changing um, and also there was other factors other fa- completely different factors as to why I wanted to to eventually leave that job and and that life and move here to Portugal, um, but uh, when 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 I I remember that uh, that sort of sense of like you know things were a bit out of balance, so I went and had my blood done. I went to a, a, a naturopath, a highly respected naturopath in Dubai, who I'm still in touch with today, and we did a full blood work, and I and she brought me into the office and she said to me, okay, so you let's let's go through this. Um, you're at stage four uh, with adrenal fatigue. I'd never heard, really mm-hmm. heard of adrenal fatigue. Um, and adrenal mm-hmm. fatigue, again, you know, some people don't believe in it. I don't, don't think it's the right sort of thing to diagnose. So again, it's a personal choice. But of course I was like, what is this? So when I started going into uh, where your adrenal glands have been so overstretched and this has taken over years, Mm-hmm. And when you start to, to read about adrenal fatigue and it's people that are young, it's often athletes, it's high achievers, it's people at the top of their game, but it's just this stress that's just been um, um, consistent, I suppose, continual. So again, achieving and being a high achiever, there's nothing wrong with that. Enjoy it, you know, really embrace whatever it is that you do and do do your job to your best ability. But when it's impacting your health and we don't even realise it, so again, if we're not getting the balance, if we're not getting the downtime, the rest time, um, I remember going, um, I I found my eyes to travel a lot. I loved, I I did a lot of travel around the world uh, with my job and um, I was sharing stories around health and well-being and food and and uh, amazing um, experiences and in many ways those experiences and what the people I was meeting and interviewing I was learning along that way when I look back I it kind of brought me to where I am today in many ways mm. so inspired by people's stories but also seeing different ways that people can live how people are connecting back into nature or already or always connected to nature and how and how their life is and so on that, learning about that and seeing that and traveling the world and experiencing beautiful moments in, in nature, you know, I climbed Kilimanjaro in 2016, I saw the curvature of the earth, you know, as the day broke and, you know, amazing experiences, but, but you know, I felt I could share and help other people, but ultimately, um, learning to bring yourself back into stillness and back into um quiet and silence and it, it's a really difficult thing to do but when you start mm-hmm. to do it and start to to really connect to it 
the difference it can make in your sense of well-being and in your body physiologically as well it, it is, is amazing so it seems yeah. so obvious it's like we know nature's good we know breathing being in nature's good for us but actually really understanding what's happening for you in your body at the moment and no matter how you're doing at work good or bad do you have enough time in your day to to, to pull back a bit to rest to 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 rejuvenate your senses to restore your senses because actually mm -hmm. coming back to that stat you shared at the beginning and what i talk to companies about is if your company if your employees are having balance and are being supported and have green around them an ability to see some sort of nature in their office or step out you know for 15 minutes and breathe all of these things are going to make, actually enable people to be more productive, to have more energy, to have more feelings yeah. of positivity. So, yeah, there's yeah. it's we're back on that circle again. Yeah, and that's so interesting the way that you say it's it's obvious, isn't it? It's it's the stillness, it's the getting into nature. And again, I'm reflecting at the point that I was in that phase of burnout where I. I knew what my body was asking for and I think what's so fascinating is to really respect the intelligence of the body like we get a cut it will just do its thing and heal over so the body's always sort of intelligently trying to draw you towards the, the remedy it needs and I kept seeing myself in a van this was before i bought my van i kept seeing myself in a van without any devices on a small trip in a forest and i was like i have to say suzanne those first four days that i took without devices i was literally in a state of cold turkey i was so frenzied and anxious in that van but i knew it was what i needed and actually at the end of that four days i remember sitting with my back against a tree and having the most powerful download as to what had got me into this state and what was gonna get me out of it. So I can really understand you wanting to focus on that area of stress management and, and the forest bathing. So let's go in a little a little bit more because you, you mentioned that retreat that you ran. You said that they had the forest bathing walk and there was the awakening the senses and breathing in the pure mountain air. So that sounds lovely. It sounds really relaxing. Can you talk a little bit more about what's going on in the body emotionally, physiologically as we start to slow down? Mm, yeah. Um, I notice and I hope this is what people um, also experience and again I, I won't always get into asking specifics but you, you part of us, the role as a guide a forest bathing guide is to work with nature work in relationship with nature and just you know enable people to access that those those what nature can offer that day and the first part of a walk I always do a letting go invitation so an invitation, you know, we do the introduction, we meet and, and then we walk a little way into the forest and then I'll invite people to just to, you know, explore uh, where they are and to maybe find a natural being, an object, something that they're drawn to, to pick it up, to really explore it, look at it, feel it, touch it and maybe just to think about any any edges or niggles or tension or worries, anything that could be... Um, preventing them from really enjoying the experience being present that day and this letting go moment so taking a few moments to just to think about that and then placing that worry or that that stress with the object and leaving it on the ground mm -hmm. and then we can walk and and enter the forest and and enter the into the forest bathing experience and from there we'll walk in and then find a space I'll, I'll guide people to a space to do a meditation around awakening the senses and in that first part you f i feel the shoulders drop um mm. this sort of sense of release almost in the body so it's quite i mean it, it can take longer for different people depending what they're carrying what you know what's happened mm. in their day before they got that you know there's many things that can be going on 
but within that moment and within that sort of gentle invitation and then really nature's doing the work you know the light the air like you said the, the shapes the color um but allowing people the time to slow down and be in it and then breathe in it the body's responding quite quickly because mm. it is set and some people will share it's like a feeling of coming home so the body very quickly so your nervous system is working um your parasympathetic nervous system is kicking in so we're feeling this sense of getting balance maybe a bit of calm coming in so i will say to people don't underestimate the work that's happening in the body today breathing in all these natural essential oils from the trees you know, called phytocytes that we breathe naturally just breathe in walking through trees or plants um, that's all just happening without you forcing anything, just being in that light, clean air, unpolluted air, breathing, looking, seeing the green, really good for the, for the brain, uh, again, for the, for the nervous system. So all that's just happening, just, just walking in it, just being in it, maybe a little bit mindful around it, what you're noticing. And then as you're breathing and maybe inviting a little bit more breath work, a bit more depth of breath, just to, often we're just, you know, as we, we know, we're just breathing at a quarter of the rate that we perhaps should be breathing as human beings. So like really taking the breath in, so really breathing in the morning, breathing in the day, noticing what's around you, breathing in the forest. And just through that process, this internal thing of what's happening physiologically, um, I'm not a scientist, but I, I just love to notice that feeling in my body. Mm. I can feel myself, like I said, kind of um, get lighter. Um, mm. I feel, I often start to yawn, so I'm, I'm obviously relaxing. Um, yeah, there's other things that I might want to release. It's quite a detoxifying process mm. that the body's going through. And so I invite people really to take notice of that, I drink lots of water, don't underestimate what's happening in the body um, just as we are where, we, where we've come from where we should be um, is in the arms of nature and letting it um, work its work its healing magic but also it's that's it's the science of it you know uh, wherever you stand within your connection to nature without having to analyze it too much um, you know the science is there and and so now we're seeing work with the nhs with um great work coming out of scotland around green prescription so actually mm. prescribing these doses of nature time in nature for stress maybe for low levels of anxiety even possibly depression um just as an initial way to see how that affects you and helps you with your well-being I, the, the way that you said don't underestimate what's happening, if, I, if we go back to right at the beginning when you do that letting go practice, for me I'm like that in itself is so powerful because I know that one of the things that is exacerbating our stress was exactly what you were talking about at the beginning, we're always available, we're always on the go, we're always on we're always connected to our devices and so often we're trying to let go in a manner that's actually just creating more stress we're trying to let go by grabbing our phone we're trying to stop thinking about one thing by binging out on netflix and so what occurs to me is i was listening to you and they're you know they're picking up this natural item in nature they're thinking about what it is that might be uh, that obstacle to relaxation and they're placing it in the object just the beauty of such a simple ritual it's giving someone a tool that actually works because unfortunately what was modeled to us most of our lives is ignore it stuff it down shoulders back and keep going and that's not because the people who were modeling were assholes it's just what was modeled to them that's all they knew so now people doing work such as you, Suzanne, who are saying, actually, these beautiful rituals in nature, here's how you can let go. 
Do you remember the first time that you that you tried an exercise or a ritual like that? I, it, it would be so fascinating just to sort of almost be walked through it. Was there any resistance? What did you think about it, and how did it work for you? Um, so, as a, in forest bathing, as a in, as a forest bathing, yeah, okay. So I well, I did my training here in Portugal, uh, two thousand and nineteen, I think it was. Um, so I had, when I was working on the radio, I had heard of forest bathing, Shinrin Yoku, um, from Japan. And then I moved here, um, and I'm living in the forest and I'm renting this little house in the forest, uh, from a friend. And I brought my dog and two cats with me from Dubai. And I, I mean, I've come from the desert and now I'm in the forest. It, you couldn't, it was just the absolute opposite ends of, of, of nature. And, and environment and atmosphere and I and I um, I um, uh, signed up I you know took part and became did my training and um, I was in a forest in Luso and I, the guides the trainers were just so inspiring really and so amazing at the way they delivered their their invitations what we call invitations in forest bathing so there's a couple of things here Gabriella I had a sense of I had a connection to nature you know obviously that's why I was drawn to this to this training um I wasn't used to you know it's a series of invitations that you're taken through um it's what I call in my training the nature immersion process um so you know anyone can take themselves for a walk and get the benefits of being in nature and that's just wonderful but what we're doing as guides is helping people reach that sense of connection so building that connection working with nature and and this sense of slowing right down mm -hmm. and walking in silence and that i found really interesting because i worked in talk radio you know i was i'm a communicator on that level of talk i worked in the arts i worked as a producer you know i it was all about communicating through the spoken word or the written word um and as much as i loved walking and hiking and being in nature this was on another level where i remember that first day with the trainers going into this forest in luso in the middle of portugal and being invited to just sit and be and just notice what's around you and for 20 minutes half an hour and it was lovely. I remember just thinking it was so lovely to just give, be given permission to do that. Um, but then the slow walk through the trees, really slow, like really slow, in silence. Um, I mean, I really loved it. But I remember thinking this is quite hard because mm -hmm. um, your mind wants to say, what's that? Look at that. Did you see mm -hmm. this? I felt that. I feel this. And actually being invited to, to try and to, to not speak and just be in it and just slow the body right down. And so that I really remember. And I remember feeling really beautiful, wonderful afterwards. And when I did my very, very first walk as a guide, as a certified guide, that was the thing that I found the most challenging. We did many practice mm -hmm. walks, but the most challenging as a guide is to not to over speak, over talk, mm -hmm. want to really help people verbally so to try to let nature do the work you're just there to connect help people get there but you're you say very little mm. oh Suzanne this share really resonates with me because a, a big aspect of my healing journey has been to embrace the silence that my body has been asking for when for me talking was a very was was essentially a maladaptive coping mechanism i'm feeling unloved right now if i make conversation i'm going to get validation or i've got an anxious feeling in my body if i talk then the vibration of my voice is going to is going to cover up that and interestingly i have a very dear friend who i have begun to she we we get together four times a year and we usually spend one or two nights together and I've started to invite her recently that we include portions of silence in that time. And interestingly, we took a walk together and she shared exactly the same thing. She was like, 
I just wanted to sort of point and, and, and say, oh, can you see that? Can you see that? But at the end of the walk, she said that she appreciated it so much and she now wants, you know, she's always now saying, when are we going to do our, our bit of silence together? Do you have a sense of what you were able to experience on the other side by kind of staying with all of these observations that you weren't immediately able to share with other people? Like what was waiting on the other side of you in that space of silence? Uh, well, as a consequence of the silence, mm. yes, as a, as a sort of the benefit. So um, that silence and slowing down you notice things you may never have noticed mm. when you're walking and talking which is great as well and that can be great th very therapeutic for people but when you walk in silence you notice the the spider's web you know you notice the dew dropping off the leaf um your senses are um we talked about awakening um but just that combination of sort of sensory connection awareness silence and then again you know that that peace you know I, I often talk about the wonderful peace of it all and it is p-e-a-c-e -E. it is this peace that you start and even though there's natural sounds of bird song maybe there might be the breeze in the trees or in the leaves or there might be flowing water or just the just the sound of your footstep walking um so you just just again without thinking too much it's not about being in the thought in the head but when you reflect and have time to reflect on that nature immersion that you've gone through that process silence enables us to free free actually free the mind um so afterwards um, and if we're doing a workshop or a retreat, there might be an invitation later to maybe write something or to journal or to sketch even. Mm. Um, not to have any great um, outcome, but the process for you, um, mm. allowing this sort of space to come in the body, in the mind, other things come up, you know, creativity, mm. memories, emotion. Mm. Um, release trauma even you know it's not all pretty um, it's not all something we perhaps we're wanting to put away but actually bringing it up nature allowing that to come up through silence through breath it, it, it allows us to heal you know it allows us to release again let go um, so yeah that silence is something certainly I've, I've felt um, and whatever is going on in your world, in your day, in your life, when you have that time in the trees, and this can be in your park or on your in your garden or your balcony if you don't have access, easy access to a forest, but just nature, um, just looking out the window at cloud gazing, the movement of clouds, just allowing that peace, silence, slowing down, breathing a little bit, awareness of your breath, what comes up for you, um, just try it and see, and just um, without you're trying to think too much, but afterwards reflect and think, yeah, a memory of climbing a tree as a child, um, playfulness, joy, um, love, you know, all different words come up with people when they've had this time in silence with nature. This is so gorgeous, that, that idea of different words coming up and it's making me think of that statement where you said silence enables us to free the mind. What's coming to me, Suzanne, is we step out of the merry-go-round of conditioned automatic thinking, which never takes us anywhere new, it's same old, same old and often quite negative, to then allowing those more conscious infinite thoughts that arise when we are connected <clears throat> you mentioned a word earlier on that i'd love to go back to you mentioned the word permission they gave you when you were doing your forest bathing you had this permission to to sit or to be or to be in silence and what's really striking me actually suzanne and i it's not something i've reflected on before 
most of us are trying to undo the the conditioning that that we experienced when we were growing up and permission is not something many of us experienced growing up we were often having to break a rule in order to do what we wanted or just toe the line so I'm actually beginning to realize this idea of permission is incredibly healing can you talk a little bit about what permission I mean you you obviously experienced that in your training but can you talk a little bit about what that's brought for you and what you notice around um yeah taking taking action that's as a result of being given permission Mm, yeah um being given you know giving yourself permission um giving yourself a gift the gift of time the gift of silence giving yourself permission to for the next two hours i'm just going to go on this walk with this guide or however whatever it may be and i'm going to just be give just be present with that and whatever's going on in my world i'm going to switch my phone off that's going to be there when i get back but for this time i'm going to i'm going to give myself permission and another way of saying that and something i really we, we work a lot with in forest therapy is compassion so compassion mm. for yourself this self love self care i mean self care mm. so quite often we feel guilty we put other people first we put our jobs first and you know obviously that's important and sometimes that's exactly what we should be doing but we forget ourselves we forget again that balance right so um what do we do with the time that we're not um caregiving or giving care to our family um to our relationships to our working life um what do we do with that other part of our our day or our life the time for us and to not feel guilty about that so again, that into you're building your intuition about what you need, um, and working with self care. So if you feel so, one of the I I see a, a wonderful herbalist here um, that supports me with some of the hormonal stuff that I've been going through with menopause, you know, in the last few years. And I always remember saying, you know, I get really tired. I mean, I could do. I was so. Uh, productive and I could juggle I could multitask I you know I could go on uh, deliver a radio show produce you know all different things I could you know I thought I could do and I, I can still do to a certain extent um, but I always remember her saying her saying to me if you feel like you want to have a lie down have a lie down what in the middle of the day or in the afternoon yeah <laughs> You know, if you're, you know, you're, I'm working from home and if my schedule and my time, what, what, go and you think, well, 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 that's something that, you know, my grandparents might do, you know, um, and it's like, no, why not? You know, uh, as a woman or as a man, um, you know, go and have half an hour, lie down, listen to your body and then see how you are after you've had that lay down or that sort of mm -hmm. sit in the chair and close your eyes or go and lie in the garden or sit in the garden for 10 minutes 15 minutes half an hour and I tell you it was liberating because it's so lovely to go I do I'm feeling fatigued I feel a bit tired. have that lie down have that rest and then I would find my day change my days have changed so where I might be more productive might be later in the day or first thing in the morning have a rest in the afternoon and then I'm working I do some work or practice in the af late afternoon or evening but if I, it was just giving yourself permission, you're listening to your body, if you feel that you need a rest, take a rest. Um, mm. it, you know, listen to what your body needs to nourish the body, nourish yourself, give yourself the care and the love that you really need that makes you feel better afterwards. Yeah. This is so cool, Suzanne, because what's coming to me is the difference between a kind of shame or guilt driven productivity or an ego driven productivity versus tapping into natural productivity and there's almost like this barrier in between like you were saying what have a lie down you know you had to sort of overcome that little bit of resistance because that's not done that's not what productivity looks like but often what we find on the other side of these barriers is actually a, a better way of being that's just such a lovely share i 
I would also love to know, Suzanne, in terms of the transition that you've made, because my experiences in nature have completely changed the way that I live and work. And someone from the outside looking in might just be like, wow, she made this amazing pivot in her business. And oh, look, it all, it's all going really well. But inside, I was terrified because I was going from a place of hustle to I'm only going to do things that nature is telling me to do. And it, it hasn't been an easy transition. So I'm curious because it sounds like you've moved from a career that has been, you know, it's been focused around media, it's been, it's enabled you to travel, there's been probably a lot more indoor work than outdoor work. How did it feel to suddenly be like, right, I'm now going to become a forest bathing guide? Yeah, I mean, there's, there was a sort of few years, it, it took time and uh, it's still ongoing, you know, that, that journey, that transition. Um, uh, I think and I have people come to me, it's been quite interesting that people that find me, I don't do a huge amount of marketing or anything like that, but people sort of find you or they, some people knew me in Dubai on the radio, so they've sought me out because they're now on at their point in their life where they're making their exit and, you know, looking at what to do with the next time, part of their life, you know, the next chapter, which was kind of what I was thinking. I was, I was sort of hitting 50 and thinking I could keep doing this, but then... And it wasn't just about a job, it was about a place, right? So I'm, I'm not mm. in my home country, so it's like, how is this what I want my next chapter to be? Um, and it was like, you know, life's short, and maybe that isn't, this isn't where I want to be, even though it's been very good to me, this isn't perhaps where I want the next to be for the next 10 years or whatever. So I made those moves to, to, to transition and make this transition in my life. The, the nature connection was there, but I hadn't, always tapped into it and I think that's something that's very important I think if people give themselves the time they'll probably feel or see that there was there was something there so I grew up in the countryside I grew up in a village I grew up in the joy of climbing trees and 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 being in beauty in in the middle of the English countryside I always had animals I always had you know and it took me it, I remember I was right in a, a very stressful point in my life um and I was like, I don't, and this was going way back, it's going back like 15 years ago, and I was like, I don't, I'm a bit lost, and I adopted two dogs, and if I had two dogs, then that meant I needed a garden, and if I have a garden, and I also need to walk these dogs, so I would find places in the desert that I could take the dogs, or I'd find beaches, because dogs aren't allowed in many places in the UAE, but I'd find these sort of places of wilderness, and, and so those dogs took me back to nature and mm. that feeling that was always there as a child I felt much better so that was actually helping me without me even consciously realizing it you fast forward to me exiting Dubai and becoming a forest therapy practitioner and working in this this practice and, and just chew, I just knew that every time I was with nature I felt better I always knew when there'd been moments in my life that were really stressful or really sad if I could get myself to a tree or into a place of beauty in nature I just felt better so that's and this is this is I'm not saying obviously if you have a clinical condition you need to be taking medication for that clinical condition but sometimes it's societal it's social we all have ups and downs in life um, sometimes we're out of balance and finding natural remedy in the what nature will offer you gardening putting your hands in soil breathing in the microbes from the soil the science is there to show you that that has a natural effect on our sense of mood um amazing right um mm -hmm. time in green spaces for healing um if you are in a hospital bed and you're by a window looking out at greenery the science is saying the research is saying you may heal faster than somebody that doesn't get to see natural light and some sort of nature so when i just mm -hmm. tapped more and more into that um, and the work on the radio was all about health and well-being and meeting lots of different practitioners and sharing experiences. It just felt natural. So I remember when I left the, sh the last day of the radio show saying, I'm going to practice what I preach, which is I can sit here in a box in a studio um, and talk every single day. But I'm actually going to live my life. Now this is time for me to spread my wings take that journey and go and live in the trees in nature 
and move my life um, forwards in that way. I'm not saying everybody needs to live in a forest, but that was my 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 journey. And um, yeah, you're right. It's not always been easy, like anything. You know, we've all had things in our lives that take us off course and things that we make choices. You know, I've just had nine months of renovation works and that's global. Anybody dealing with work, you know, living in the house while the building's happening, it's not entirely conducive to to uh to to forest therapy in a way but um yeah the stress with that so you know it's not and we obviously all went through the pandemic which took us off course a little some of us off course so you know it's not been people might look at me and go look at your lovely house your lovely home look at the trees look where you live look at the weather and all of that is true and i'm so grateful that i have what i have and it's it has been a lot of work to get to where i am now geographically and emotionally and but um you know it was when i tapped into nature and kept listening you know wake up when the sun rises go to bed when the sun sets you know give or take um get in your circadian rhythm um try and get in um rhythm with nature listen to your body try and heal your body naturally but always obviously go to a conventional medicine as well um, but just look at the balance look at the alternatives see what complements your healing or your journey that you need to go on but don't ignore nature let it come in bring it into your home into your heart mm. into your body and see where it takes you mm, that that idea of letting nature in but if we follow the journey that you've just shared with us Suzanne it's this idea of it, allowing it to be there in the background giving you little nudges giving you little insights and as you say it's not about oh I can hear nature I'm going to go and live in a tree house but it's about hang on how does a how does a life and a career with some aspect of nature what does that look like for me and that's that's something that I've been figuring out myself I love that you talked about slowly coming into the rhythm of nature because that's something I found hugely beneficial I'm I'm going through the perimenopause at the moment and I'm interested because you mentioned earlier on menopause and stress I, I'd love to just touch on that as, as we sort of come into our, our final quarter of this interview because I have to say that for me when I'm thinking about the perimenopause and the experiences I'm having with it, I am so grateful for the practices and the routines that I have spent most of my life embedding because whew, I need them now more than ever. And I'm really realizing that nature is my greatest ally. Remaining connected to my intuition is my greatest ally. Can you talk to us a little bit about what happens to our stress? At this at this stage in our life and, um, and and what you've discovered sure I mean I can talk about a little bit about my personal experience again everybody's different I'm sure how your body responds what what's happening with your hormones and, and what's the changes that are going on in, in your body um, to, to what you may go through what your symptoms might be but the response to stress um, I mean, I, I became more sensitive to it, for sure. Mm. Um, and this, you know, your, your hormones are out of balance, so your reaction, the you're not sleeping so well, so then that, that has a knock-on effect, because, you know, you, you might have a hot flash in the night, or you're waking up, and all these things. And, um, and it's, it, you know, sometimes you, you feel these, it's like rapid sometimes, it's been rapid. I was like, you know, things are changing rapidly in my body mm -hmm. and my responses uh, to situations that, whoa, you know, that's a lot to deal with. And it's, it's, it's emotional and it's also physical. And then it's societal. So you're mm -hmm. shifting for me, a shifting. So I shifted country, culture, and these changes happening. And then, you know... Um, sold a house in London, bought a house here, renovated a house. There's a lot of changes going on externally as well as, as internally. So trying to get a handle on all of that and feel 
balance was is really really difficult for me and it's probably still a work in progress but certainly what has helped me is a bit of acceptance and understanding that nature in nature there's always a reason for everything that happens and there's a place for everything and it all interconnects in some way and it all actually makes sense and if we let ourselves see it and and maybe give into it a little bit accept it and go with the flow of it go with the the natural uh journey of it and that's been quite liberating um this is you know as women as men we are as human beings we are nature you know we are made up mm. of physiology our cells our the water the you know our the, we are part of nature and so allowing to feel and let things go or go with the way your body is changing um you know i mean i don't want to be too cliched about it but there is a lot of comfort and support by watching a sunrise by seeing a sunset by noticing the change in seasons um your place within all of that as a, as a as a person as a human being um it's really been very comforting for me and very enlightening and in fact at times been more sense of joy than i ever had in you know before so those that like i said i think i touched on before about child you know you start to things come into your mind about from years ago that you thought mm. you know that's gone and so there's a lot to embrace and there's a lot to, to enjoy but it's not an easy it's not easy it's not easy for sure um and coming into you know when you look in nature at wild animals and you see the dominant an animal aging and changing and perhaps becoming weaker in some ways um, I really look at that because there's beauty in that. There's wisdom, mm -hmm. you know, so trying to, so now in my coaching, you know, I don't push, like I used to push, you know, I love to, to create content and to tell stories and I'd be pushing for the next thing I was going to be a part of. You know, I love people, I love that. Um, and I'm not pushing so much. Mm -hmm. I'm letting go, I'm accepting. Mm -hmm. And I'm shifting in the natural place of things, which is maybe to help others a little bit or coach others, mentor others, training. So, you know, take the experience, become, you know, share a bit of wisdom when I can, but also love to hear other people. Everybody's got something to share, whatever age, whatever their experience. Um, so trying to let go, shift and move with it as it's supposed to be, you know, as it's as it's meant to be. Yeah. That, a lot of that's really inspiring, Suzanne, thank you. I I was very interested by the phrase, you, you said we can become more sensitive to stress. And it's making me think about <clears throat> a friend who started the perimenopause and was sharing her symptoms with me and I remember thinking, oh, that's that's how I felt my whole life. So, all you know, for me, I sort of think, God, it must be so terrifying to have lived most of your life without these symptoms and to suddenly have them versus I've had them most of my life. And so all of my tools are about. But yes, I've definitely noticed whilst I've always been incredibly sensitive to stress, that sensitivity has has gone up. But because I've always been sensitive I've got a lot in place for that. But it's making me think of the difference. You've mentioned it a couple of times, good stress, because one of the things that I've massively benefited from in my stress management and, and, and crawling my way back from burnout is, is increasing that window of tolerance, that place where I'm able to be in a state of stress, but also functional. So can you talk to us a little bit for those people who are like, oh, uh, yes, I think I'm sensitive to stress too. Like as soon as I feel it, I start taking action that's not productive um, or doing things that actually cause more chaos. So what's, what's good stress and how can we start to build our tolerance if we do find ourselves sensitive to stress? 
Mm. Yeah, uh, it's, 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 it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because if you were to, if I was to paint the picture of good stress, say for example, you're going to deliver a speech at you know best man's wedding or you're um you've got uh, a deadline at work or um you know a bit of stress will push you over the line you know in a good way it's like we need a bit of adrenaline we need something to pump us to and that's humans working well um uh, it's doing what we need to do um in that time in that moment understanding what what's expected of us and being able to deliver it um if sometimes if we're just you know we need that sort of burst to push us through push us past that mm. that line uh, on delivery um so i think that's a bit of good stress that it's not so good if we're doing that all day every day yeah. and we're not getting the downtime and we're not getting to restore rest and restore as we said before then you start heading into the realms of the adrenals overworked and maybe heading to, towards burnout you know and feeling overwhelmed right those those senses of stress when it's not not good for us so um so a bit of good stress yeah for sure again i think it's about i remember working with a group uh, a company and i share a questionnaire around stress you know in the last in one day when have you felt this and it might be have you felt overwhelmed you know score one to five um on on that um not feeling in control not feeling appreciated or understood so there's a, you know there's different tests you can do um and uh people found it really difficult to fill that in mm. because they weren't even really thinking about it weren't even really aware that it was yeah. happening and so we're going right we have to go even back further then really right to, to grassroots level and very slowly like anything like anything we learn or relearn or practice it takes practice it doesn't happen mm -hmm. overnight so very slowly and the last thing as a practitioner i'm really mindful that i do this when i'm training forest bathing guys a lot I talk about this a lot is the art of language so we're not creating more stress for people by talking about stress as we talked and touched on before so so bringing it right back to simple things that happen in your day simple questions open questions and you're oh yeah i did feel that I, that did happen and then they're in very gentle ways to combat, to balance that out, to combat those those moments or those feelings. That's so interesting, the idea of, firstly, you have to be able to notice the stress because if we are just automatically plowing through our day and we don't realize we're not asking ourselves those important questions. And one thing that I discovered on, on my healing journey is that in the womb, my nervous system's default was activation. And so stress was a, was a normal state for me. So I didn't notice it. So it took a lot of work. I remember actually coming out of lockdown. My business was incredibly busy through lockdown and I, I really just worked. And I remember coming out of lockdown and spending two days at a spa with a friend and feeling so significantly different. That was the first I realized how long I'd been in a heightened state of stress it was only when I calmed down that I was like oh my god this place yeah. this yeah. is so completely different uh, it's interesting I, I went to America I booked a three-week holiday I really was a treat it was my 50th year so it's a real treat I flew there from Dubai I went on I went I was I wanted to hike and spend three weeks in America and I could not relax and I remember mm. getting into 10th kind of seven eight days in thinking what's happened you know this was that was perhaps one of the turning points for me that when i began to yeah. realize you need to well, this is not right so if you can't take a holiday and switch off and not respond to emails and not respond to to whatsapp messages um something's not right you know if you're not feeling well and this is supposed to be a real joyful treat amazing uh, you know experience and what I did was I went over my budget for accommodation to seek out the quietest, most remote place mm -hmm. for me to be, which was up in the mountains in trees. And remember, at this point, I had no idea that I was going to end up living in a similar place, you know, five years later. Um, 
but there I found this place that was kind of off grid and uh, found this place it was you know it was on Airbnb it was like a place you could access but I wanted to find somewhere to get away from technology so I couldn't be contactable so I couldn't respond and I spent three days um, at this couple's house with my own room looking at trees sleeping reading um, eating well and yeah and that was I remember leaving that place coming back down the mountain back to sort of you know technology civilization or whatever you want to call it and yeah thinking there's something in this you know you have to I have to learn from this this is not how I want to live right mm. so yeah yeah and a bit like when I had that four days in my van that it's, at the beginning it has to be self-imposed like we have to put ourselves in a place where it it can't happen because if I had taken, I mean, there wasn't, um, there actually wasn't signal where I was in my van, but I didn't even take my, I didn't even take my iPad so I could read. I didn't take anything. I mean, it was a bit, it was a bit extreme, but I did, I did get through it. But yes, I think there's no shame in the fact that you have to do that at the beginning because we're so in those patterns. Yeah, yeah exactly. And and again you know keep going back to how does it feel in the body how does that what does it look like what does stress look like for me and how does it feel how does it sit in my body and just start those simple connections and then little tuning alterations where you can without putting yourself under stress you know under too much pressure um and this compassion just bring it back try to work on and not feel guilty about what do I need and if I'm good then I can give to my family then I can give to work if I'm good you know if I'm I'm strong you know like the tree if I can open my arms even wider but to do that I have to get to the core of me and take care of that to then be able to take care of others and just as I'm a conscious of time for you Gabriella is what well, I just need to mention if I'm saying compassion and using that term for ourselves then also compassion for nature. You know, a big part mm. of what I practice and what we practice and appreciate with nature. So not to just take from it. You know, we realize it's good for us, so we'll just keep taking from it to give to ourselves. So really working on compassion for ourselves and then how can we give back to nature as well? Thanking it, being aware of it, little things you can do in your community or even just planting a tree in your garden. but. And I'm not saying that to be, you know, worthy and and um, I'm saying it because it feels good. So yeah. it, we, we really notice that the more we get into nature and connect to nature and feel good in nature, we then want to take care of it more and be more aware of it to give back to it. And that brings joy. It brings joy. That giving brings joy. So it's mm -hmm. all feeding back into that, that pot of um, well-being and care. Mm, I'm glad that you that you added that compassion to nature and yes that that lovely reflection that you made that when when we're feeling better we actually want to give to nature I really notice it with my house plants the days that I'm more relaxed I spend more time with them if I'm if I've got my stress levels up the days that they need um, tending to and watering I go around very sort of perfunctorily and just all right just give it everything water so I can get back to it so it's a great litmus test for me really yeah. really lovely and uh, and you know when we're in a more sort of you know um, directive world or prescriptive world where everything's sort of structured and we have our, our and you know technology is great obviously we're doing this through technology you know there's so many good things but when it becomes the prop for everything and this mm. it's, you know we've got there's more when you're looking at young people more anxiety in younger people more uh, sense of loneliness uh, than ever before across all generations um, and there was a beautiful thing I saw during, it was actually during COVID I saw it and I use it a lot if you can't hug a person hug a tree and you know if you can't you know some people are housebound or they don't have the luxury of a beautiful park on their doorstep or, so you know have that plant in the house or have a picture a photograph nurture it look at it think be mindful um you know hold it in your hands um that worry you know i mentioned the object the natural being at the beginning you know we sometimes call it a worry stone 
you know mm. there are all things around us actually if we look for it we if we look even in highly industrial um, areas or built up areas you'll see a weed pushing up through a paving stone you know the resilience the strength the many metaphors you can look and see around you so yeah beautiful you know open your house to plants um nurture them nourish them and you're nourishing yourself yeah 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 absolutely Suzanne this has been such a treat I've really enjoyed chatting with you today I'll be popping your links in the show notes below but what's you know if someone actually wants to reach out and, and and find you on on the other side of that message what's the best way to get in touch with you so I'm uh, across uh, talking about technology across um, most of the uh, platforms and um, so you, I work with people online as well with uh, nature well-being coaching I'm um, also training guides so if it's something you're interested in becoming a guide yourself then you can either come to me here in Portugal in person or I also do training online so there's the training the coaching um, my website's the nature pod um, I'm Forest Bathing Algarve and I'm Suzanne Radford and yeah, I look forward to connecting with you again very soon. Thank you so much, Suzanne.